Welcome to Psychic Holistic Spotlight. I'm your host, Josie Way, and tonight we have as co-hosts Ken Demers and Sherry Kachanis. And we're very privileged to have as our guest, a oh, homegrown <laughs> <laughs> native uh, New Englander here, Roland Comtois, a noted medium here at, and internationally. Thank you, I'm glad to be here with you guys, thanks. I am glad too. Um, some people don't know exactly what you do, but you have, you, they've seen parties, you know, mm -hmm. of, where there's gatherings with mediums and stuff. And they've seen John Edwards and, and bigger things. Well, you're of the size of John Edwards types of presentations. And how, I was curious to know, how do you prepare for that? How do you, and you stay open with all of that's going on. Well, that's, that really is a great question because it takes a lot of focus, it takes a lot of energy to sit in that quiet space, uh, preparing yourself to hear the messages, to feel the messages, to sense the messages. And so I do a lot of work and I, I start preparing three to four hours before my actual event. So I do a lot with sitting quietly in meditation and prayer and really holding a sense of reverence for that opportunity. You know, I, I feel very strongly about this, that if there are five people in a room or 800 people in a room, uh, I am taking a walk into their lives for a moment or two. And, and I hold a lot of energy for that and, I, and I'm grateful for that. So I spend a lot of time just kind of staying in that quiet space. So I do a lot of work. Yeah, and do messages come to you spontaneously as well? The, the, the purple messages, for yeah. instance, that you're it so really famous also, for. If it isn't spontaneous, then it's not a spiritual message. Because all of the messages that are channeled are spontaneous, are present in some moment. So yes, they are spontaneous. They come in the middle of the night. Uh, can I tell you a little story about this? Mm -hmm. I was at home and I was, um, getting ready for a nice, comfortable, quiet night, watching TV, watching the movies or whatever. And I was sitting there, it was about 9, 10, and this voice came in my head said, call my mother right now. And I said, well, who are you and what must I say? And I heard it again and it was very strong and powerful and it said, Call, your, call my mother right now. And then I went through some papers and I realized that the name that I was looking for was the woman that I had been talking to earlier in the day. So I sent her a Facebook message and I said, I have a message for you, can I speak to you? She lives in New York City, I live in Rhode Island, and there was just this one moment of us connecting. I said, I have a message for you from your son that passed away. She started to cry. She said she had just finished writing the last chapter of her new book. Mm -hmm. And she wondered, did her boy, does her boy really know, does he really know that I'm doing this in honor of him? Mm -hmm. And at 9, 10 p.m., I felt that spontaneous moment. It filled every part of my soul. I called that woman and she said, oh my God, it was exactly what I needed. So that's as, as spontaneous as it gets. Mm -hmm. When you tell the story to people, do they, do they kind of accept it and what do they think of it? Well, yeah, people accept what they, they accept what they need. They take in what they need from the experience. People take exactly what they need. They no, get I mean exactly, like your audience. Yeah, they take exactly okay. what they need. They, you know, I could be standing in front of a room with a lot of people and talking to one person in the front row, but the lady in the back row knows somewhere in her that those words that I'm speaking are hers. And she doesn't get in dispute. She says, my God, I needed that message too. Yeah, I you know, believe so, that. So they take what they need from the experience. It's not only about the words that are spoken though, you know, it's also about the energy in the room. You know, I remember at an event I did in Westchester, New York, I walked up to some woman and I just held her. There was nothing else to do. There were no words from her father. She said, please, I need to hear about my mother. There were no words from her mother. All I could do was embrace her. That's all I had. That's all I had. And I felt, and I certainly feel, that that moment is as important well, as a message coming through. 
from somebody else, I might find that strange, but I know basically, I guess, hundreds of mediums, and you are the most hot-scented one mm. I know. I, I, so thank this, you for this that. sounds like it's part of your, your hot touch, hot to hot work. I, I feel that. You know, I feel it. Um, I'll, can I tell another story? We love there was stories. This, there was this oh, young... we're counting. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was this young... I did a, an event in Swansea, Massachusetts, and there was this young kid there, eight years old, and, you know, normally you have to be 18 years old because it gets a little emotional, but there was an eight-year-old kid in the room with his mother. His father had passed away, and he had longed, longed to have a moment with his dad, right? So I was home preparing, writing on the purple papers, and there was a message that said, when you wear my um, Red Sox shirt, I'll be there with you, and I'll make you the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that I used to make. That's what it said. What could that possibly mean, right? It meant everything, everything to, that, to that little boy. There he is in the front row, sitting there with a Red Sox shirt on that happened to belong oh. to his father. And I said the story about, you know, I, I, the story about the peanut butter and jelly, and the, the mother starts to cry, right? She realizes that in that moment that her husband is somehow stretching through some place to give that little boy a moment of hope. So now we're done the presentation. I walk in the back and the little kid follows me. And he says, hey, I want you to know, you did pretty good tonight. You did pretty good, he says, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's got this big tear coming down, but you did pretty good, he says. And, and I knew in that moment that. Trying to be all grown up. Yeah, trying to be all grown up. But he was a little kid missing his dad. Missing his dad. And you know, it's moments like that, uh, Ken, that that yeah. bring me closer to the understanding that love is here. Right. You now. said one other thing earlier tonight. I can't even remember how you worded it. If if it doesn't come Spontane. immediately, spon or whatever, Spontane. spontaneously, yeah. it's not from spirit. Yes. What else would it be from? Well, what I mean is that it's it's not coming from my consciousness. It's not a psychic. Right. It's, it's not a, coming it's a from me. Touch. It's coming from that other universal place, which to me is right here in this moment. Right. Mm -hmm. we, it's yeah. in all place and all time. So when it's spontaneous, it's a direct message from that universal spiritual place. When it isn't spontaneous, and I've gone through some process within myself that makes it a little different, that makes the experience a little different. It doesn't make it less holy, it just makes it different. How do you distinguish way. between psychic knowledge that you get and mediumistic knowledge? Well, you know, there's a fine line between those two places. Yeah. There's a very fine very line fine. there, right? Um, but I have spent a lot of time you know, sitting in that quiet space, learning the differences between those two vibrations. Now, you might look at me and see I haven't lifted many weights <laughs> lately. You, can, you oh, might get that impression. But, but you're spent, a spiritual. I, right, exactly. But I spend a lot of time there. So when the message is divinely uh, transmitted, right, there's this feeling inside that makes my heart expand. It's like we're in some zone somewhere. Mm -hmm. okay. That's when I know it comes from that higher place, if you will, or that place where the medium mes messages are. There's such a fine line here, Ken, that, you know, my best explanation is by how I feel when I have mm -hmm. that moment, because that moment is transformed. I can relate to that expansion of the hot feeling. I, yeah. I've yeah. only had it happen once or twice, but it's... Yeah very noticeable when it happens. Yeah. But you know you've been touched by spirit. You oh, do. Yeah. And every person who's listening or watching this show, who's all have had an experience where you've been touched in some way, right? But some of us say, well, it was, uh, it was just a coincidence. Someone will say, ah, I don't believe in that stuff. It's just something that happened. We will say it was something magnificent. It was something transformative. Mm -hmm. It was something that gave me a boost forward and that's the power. And we do love synchronicities. Oh, well, my God. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Yeah. It's yeah. those moments that are so divinely Spirit, orchestrated. Spirit loves to do some of the orchestrations. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely loves to yeah. do that. Give credit where it's due, right? Um, they definitely 
are uh, on a mission. Can I tell you another little story? Of course. Right? I'm sorry with all my stories. <laughs> I love we stories. We love stories. <laughs> <laughs> I was in another place in New York and my one of my very dear friends had passed away and I was longing for her and very overwhelmed by her passing. And I was presenting in Chappaqua, New York, Katona, New York, and all, and all those places. And I walked into this little shop called Awakenings, and there was a lady there who had seen me the night before at an event. And mm. I said, I forgot to give you the entire message I was supposed to give you. Can I give it to you now? I walked into there and I said, here's your message. And I said to her, I hope you don't mind, but I have a CD in my pocket. Could I play for you the song of my friend that just passed away? Could I play it for you right now? I put it in the machine, right? It plays the song. The woman starts to cry. It was her best friend's song, a song that they shared together. How is it that I would be in that room at that moment playing that? That was right. a synchronistic moment. You can't fight that. No, you can't. So here I am playing this. The lady's bawling her eyes out. I'm in the store, I'm bawling my eyes out. Now customers are coming in, they're bawling their eyes out too, but they have no idea why. Mm -hmm. It was because it was one beautiful moment where that song somehow brought us all together in some way, right? The song, by the way, is Over the Rainbow by Iz. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't heard it, you should listen to it. It is beautiful. Powerful and beautiful. And so it was a synchronistic moment. So I said to myself, because I'm always talking to myself, if you don't know that, <laughs> I'm always having these inner conversations, and I said, was that a sign? I get in the car, I put the, the you know, get the car going, and, and the car in front of me said, cat, 1019. My friend's name was Cat. Mm. She died on 1019. Yeah, well. Should yeah. I say anything else? That's that's a common occurrence, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's well, a beautiful occurrence. It's it's really beautiful when they do get everything they're able to put everything together like okay. that for two, you. Two things. Where are you gonna be in the near future? Or where have you just been that was interesting? Mm. <clears throat> and explain to people what your purple papers are. Well, and do you have any? You know, we I, do, but he's hooked up. Yeah, I'm hooked up. Um, I have uh, every place that I've ever been in the last year has been interesting because I've met people that have been extraordinary. I have met people who came into that room broken hearted in a thousand pieces and they had the courage to take a step through their own grief to take a chance on getting a message. So the people that I've met uh, make my life extraordinary. They make my life incredible. I mean, I am the one that's lucky here. I, get a, I have a chance to sit with them and to share with them the power of the experience. You know, I really, uh, I've said this already, but I really want to say it again. I'm the fortunate one here. I have a chance to step into their lives for a second or two to have a tiny little conversation about something that will bring them peace and, 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 yeah. and light. And, and that's, that's the power and of it. Sometimes it's something that you would never imagine. No, I know. Peanut butter and jelly. Right. Peanut butter and jelly. Or, you yeah. know, recently I was at an event and this lady is still in my mind, so she touched my soul in a very beautiful way. There was a purple paper and all it showed on the paper was a tree and a line going across the tree. That's all it was. A now, rainbow? who yeah. would know what that meant, right? except for the woman in the back row, yeah. who's barely 20 years old, whose sister died in a zip line accident, or some oh. crazy scene like that. That purple paper gave her the, uh, the idea that her sister is still part it's of her. Still. You know, I could go on and on and on, because I can talk, right? We already know this, I can talk, I can go on and on and on. But the people that I have met in 2014 and 13, and every year beyond that, really have been incredible. So I've been to very wonderful places. Okay. Tell I've people what the purple people. papers are. You, we, we're talking about them, but many people out there right. don't know. Well, the purple papers are pre-recorded, uh, pre-documented, channeled messages. They're large 11 by 17 purple papers that depict a story. Uh, uh, I call them love letters from heaven. That they're little tiny stories, little glimpses of a relationship or an experience between two people. And they're written out in detail with colors and names of people and, um, and stories of how people passed and stories about how people lived. 
There's all kinds of stories on those okay. purple papers. What he's not saying is that when he knows he's going to be at a, yeah. a function tonight or tomorrow night, he'll sit down days in advance You're right. and write these things out yes. for people that yes. aren't there yet. Yes. I, I haven't met these people. Thank you. I haven't met those people. It's all done in advance. You know, I'm sitting there in front of a blank purple paper waiting to meet someone somewhere, somehow. I don't know how it all happens. Now, it do, just you, happens. do you know, why do you use purple? Well, for me, purple is a, a color of ascension. It's a color of a high energy, and it's a color of spirituality. Mm -hmm. It's a color of divinity. It's a color of all that. I got another answer for you. You're good. Purple is one of, these only, ugh, I can't remember now, but purple is one of the few colors that spirit is capable of reading. Oh, beautiful, didn't realize I it that I think the other sense. one was green, but I'm not, I, I can't remember. There was two or three colors. Yeah. Well, it's, Most yeah. of them, like, like if you write in blue ink or something, yeah. can't see it. Yeah. You're on the purple. I well, I write it in purple. And the other thing I should say is, I had a little message in my head that said, write on purple papers. And I said, yes. Okay. Plain and simple. Because they can see it. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand why they were so uh, emphatic on, on that particular story. So the purple papers are all written in advance of meeting an audience. So I'll write tomorrow for tomorrow night's group. And they might get messages that were recorded a year before. I don't know. I'll only understand that when I'm in that room mm -hmm. and in that place. A year before? Mm -hmm. Do you have papers at home that you don't know where they're going and you I, just pick them up and take them with you? I carry papers with me that I've held on to for 10 years. I started writing in 2005. I'm still waiting for the Walcott family. <laughs> they were the first message I've ever recorded in 2005. So I'm waiting for them. So I hold on to the papers and I read every paper before every event so that whatever needs to stick out in my mind will. Now, is it possible, whoever the Walcott family is, I have no idea, yes. but is it possible that they've already come and gone from one of your groups? Absolutely, yep, absolutely. Once a year, my staff and I, we sit in front of those purple papers and we look at them to see if, if they are, you know, if there's a resemblance to even them, because I have people helping me there, right? They, I have a staff sitting there and they're holding the purple papers while I'm talking to the audience. And I say to them, get me the purple paper. That's all I say. Sometimes they know exactly which purple paper I'm looking <laughs> for. You know, so the, you have to see how it unfolds. Talking about it doesn't give it enough of what it really is. Well, it's yeah. very dramatic that you know way ahead of time information that somebody needs. Yeah, and you know, there was another... And connects with. And there was another remarkable moment where a woman said, Oh my God! She yelled it out in front of the whole audience. That's my birthday! <laughs> and she knew in that moment that that was a little gift. The date that the, because each paper has a date on it and a message, some of it in color, some of it with just words, um, and she knew that it was a little gift for her. Wow. A little trinket from that other place. Neat. Uh, yeah, it is neat. I, I should also say to you that I don't think the other place is upstairs or across the street. I think the other place is right here. Yeah. I think it's right here. Right now. Right now. Well, this is absolutely wonderful, beautiful place to exist in. Mm. If we all treated each other the way we should be treating each mm. other. God, that, that's a conversation in itself. <laughs> really. Yeah. When, when is humanity going to take their human kindness back? Their kindness. Yes. Really. When are they going to take back who they truly are? Right? That's what this show does and people like us do, is we ri remind people of their human kindness, of their loving kindness. And it, it, it's not about really, the truth is, it's not about the message. I'm not in the business of talking to the dead. Not at all. I'm in the business of talking to the living, to you, to you out there somewhere. Well, that's an interesting way of putting it. It, it is. Because the people I meet, are in a lull somewhere, and they can't seem to, whatever, for whatever reason, can't minute. move people forward. People you meet that are alive, or people you meet that have passed over? No, we're talking about the alive ones, the ones that are here and present, in this physical moment with us. When they come to my audiences, they're searching and seeking. They're looking for hope. 
they're looking for inspiration. They're looking for, they, they want to find that something again. And understanding. Yeah, they want, yeah, they want someone to take them by the hand and say, yeah, it's okay to believe. And it's okay to grieve. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to come back to your human self and be that person that you are truly meant to be. When people are exposed to you, yeah. I don't know how else to put it, <laughs> does it have a profound effect on people that it changed? If they came in being very skeptical, yes, do, they, do they walk out being non-skeptical and do they stay non-skeptical? That's a great question. Um, interestingly enough, um, very soon in, in Psychology Today, there will be um, uh, an article about me and it's about a man, a psychiatrist, who came to an event who is a non-believer, psychiatrist, right? Yeah. Scientific, operates, he's a great man, by the way. Mm. He has his way of understanding things. But in, the, in his article, he writes about how he recognizes the healing power of that experience. Mm -hmm. He doesn't necessarily believe in messages or channeled messages, but he recognized that there was a power of healing that took place in a room with 150 people. And so, you know, that'll, that will be coming out very soon. So, But will he ever use it? Well, he was a witness to it. In his practice, he uses his own connection, whatever that connection is, to bestow healing to his patients. What he witnessed in that, at that event with 150 people in the room, he witnessed the power of the group healing. Mm. Because when you right. talk to one person, yes, right, it affects so, everyone in that room. It affects everybody. Yeah. I said, I've said this on this show before. I, the thing that amazes me is how, how a stranger reaches over and takes the hand of another stranger Oh my God. Or takes the box of tissue and walks it over to some guy and it's sobbing because his father just told him how proud he was of him in some message. Something happens there. It's because you're in a group experience because you're allowing yourself to have that experience and something beautiful happens. You come back. You see, what happens, Ken, is you come back. Everybody comes back to their truth in that one moment, even the people that don't believe. Does, is it, I don't know how many people you do one-on-one -on -one nowadays, you're more geared towards big groups, yes. but is it more profound for people when they're in a, a small group or one-on-one -on -one than when they're in a big group? Uh, does, it, does it make a difference? Uh, the, of course the answer is yes. If I was just sitting with you, you'd probably, or, or not me, yeah. or anybody like me, yeah. you'd have a much different experience than you would if you were sitting in a room with 800 people. I will tell you though, you know, I've been in groups of five to 800 people. I did 800 people at the stadium theater, and they all were, you know, there's, there's a way of bringing everybody together, um, and, and that's what happens. You bring people together. So is it as profound? I think it's much more profound in the smaller, Groups because it's you're almost having a one to one connection with someone. Yeah, but you're only one man, and how many people can you reach? Well, yeah, yeah. you got eight hundred yeah, people. Look, that's 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 where we have to step beyond our our thinking. That's right. Right, because we're just one. But in fact, whatever comes forward from someone like us or a message, that message isn't really meant for one person. It never is. No, never is. No. I might say to that one guy, I, I'll never forget this one guy, right? I walked up to him, I said, I know this is strange, but I'm supposed to say, I have a message from your brother. I said, no, here's a big guy like this, he's bearded, he's a, he's a nice guy, strong guy, sitting there, not going to give in, right? I walk up to him and I say, your brother wants me to give you a message. And all I did was go, boo, like this. <laughs> the whole audience roared, right? And the guy started crying because his brother was this amazing jokester. Mm -hmm. And he would say boo to him and scare him and frighten him. And he knew in that moment and sir, that there was something incredible that happened. What happened for the entire audience was that they all had a chance to embark on that journey with that guy for a moment or two. So it's not just about one person in that audience, it's about all of us.
Mm. It's about all of us. Do you, do you find more people expressing a desire to learn how to, I think learn how to do it is the proper term. Yeah, that, that is a great question well, and the answer is gonna yes. We're going to do a whole show on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's, so the answer is yes. People are searching and seeking to make their own connections. Um, I, I, I don't want to do, I don't have the answers for you. There's nothing I can tell you that you don't already know. Yeah, but uh -huh. they don't know. That's why I'm asking you. There's nothing out there that you don't already know. Oh. You know yeah. the answer in you. It's you always want, within you. It's always within you. Yes. We just help you to see that it's within you. That's all I do. It's not that mysterious. Let's, let's get the mystery out of the experience. It really is all in you. I help you to see it. Everybody is psychic. Everybody is mediumistic. No doubt. No doubt in, no doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind at all. Yeah. I, I think that it's time for us to, you know, take a step forward or inward back mm. to the place where all those messages are. You know what? You know what, Ken? My mother passed away three years ago. I'm not going to call you for a message. I'm going to sit in here and listen to her and feel her. I'm not going to call you, I'm sorry, for a message from my mother because I know she'll talk directly to me. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to ask. You do have to ask. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be patient and be prepared to hear the answer. I don't mean to be fresh, but I'm not calling you to get a message from my mother. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit and listen. And I'm going to say, Ma, what do you have to say to me today? And I'm going to just mm -hmm. be present for whatever she has to say to me. That's how yeah. I work it. That's how I believe it anyways. Yeah. I, I, I imagine the people on the other side get well, I know they do when they're dealing with me, but they get highly <laughs> frustrated that they're not able to communicate to the normal, to an average person. Well, with a little practice and a little bit of consistency um, and a little bit of perseverance, you too will hear. Now, if you were gonna suggest to people that they should start to try to do this, what would you suggest that they'd start? How would they start? The first thing I would say is just be quiet. <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> Be settled, get off your phone, get off Facebook, get off Twitter, just get away from the electronical experiences of your life. Sit in a quiet place, place that you designate is sacred. You could sit outside, you could sit in a temple, you could sit in a synagogue, wherever you want to sit. But go and be quiet and be reverent and be prayerful, be meditative, be silent. Accomplish that. And then we'll talk about what the next step and then, is. And then you ask, and then what comes to you is supposed to come to you. You have to learn. We truly have to learn how to be silent first. That is a yeah. very difficult it is. experience it is. in this day in life. And until we accomplish that, we won't hear with clarity the message that they're trying to send us. No. Yeah. Thank and, you. And we also have to learn to let our ego get out of the way too. Yeah, that's another. That's, 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 another, that's, that's, that's another, another lesson. Show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Do you have but, any purple papers for people out in the world that I you want? I have lots of purple papers out in my my uh, suitcase. Lots of purple papers for the world. Lots of them. They'll just have to come to see you. Uh, yeah. Your guests speaking at numerous expositions this yes. spring. Yes, I am. Throughout New England. I will be. And I'll be um, speaking in Gubbio, Italy uh, this year. Lots Where? Say that again. Gubbio, Italy. Gubbio. Gubbio, Italy, two and a half hours north of Rome. Uh, wow. I'm speaking there this year. And um, and I've been asked to speak in hey, Ecuador and could, Syria. Could we get you to go down about two and a half hours south and give a message to the Pope? <laughs> if I, I could certainly He do might, that. you know, he's, might be he's open wide minded he enough, certainly. he might accept it. Yes. He might, you never know. He might. You never know. Um, I appreciate it. We are coming to the end where I want to say thank you very much for being thank with you. us. And thank you for being my co-host. And thank you for joining us on Psychic Holistic Spotlight. Now, to, to get back to Italy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, and visiting you know, you, you get to do uh, you get to do more than just well, visit. Well, I'm, I'm also leading a pilgrimage while I'm there. Oh, so wow. uh, we're going on a 10-day pilgrimage to St. Francis of Assisi's <gasps> feast day, um, and we're going to sacred tombs and doing meditations and prayers wow. and some very spectacular places. How exciting. Mm. It's very exciting. And how, <laughs> how did you wind up going there? Long story. Long and beautiful and magnificent 
story that I could never tell in 30 seconds.